Hey guys, what's up? It's Moz here, and welcome back to another video. So I've made quite a lot of these gaming PC build videos in the past, and they always seem to do incredibly well with you guys, so I thought I'd make another one, kind of because 2019 is just around the corner. So the difference between this build and most of my other ones is that this is not only going to be just a gaming PC, but it should also work perfectly for live streaming to services like Twitch and YouTube as well. The one thing about this build is that it will end up being a little bit pricey, but I'm going to try to keep it as affordable as I can. All the parts I do mention in the video are going to be linked in the description below from the Amazon website. Also, if this video doesn't help you guys out at all in any way, and you guys want to see more videos like, it, please remember that like button and also hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. Right, let's get on with the build. So now first things first is that we're gonna have to talk about what's powering our build and I don't actually mean like the power supply but what I'm talking about here is the processor. And for our build it's gonna be the AMD Ryzen 5 2600 CPU but honestly for this component I'm also gonna be linking the uh, 1600 as well because they're basically both the same thing but the 2600 is newer and only like $20 more I believe coming at like $160 or $170. Now there's a quite a lot of reasons why you would want to go with a Ryzen CPU over an Intel one when it comes to like streaming builds like this one right here and the price is a perfect reason. This is a 6 core 12 thread processor only for $160 or $170 and I've never in my life seen an Intel processor that cheap which works as well as this one does right here. But Intel processors are great so honestly go with whatever fits your budget. But for streaming and gaming at the same time I think AMD Ryzen is a really good choice. Okay so now we can move away from the processor and actually head over to the motherboard. And here we're actually going to be using the Asus Prime B350M-E AM4 motherboard. That's like a mouthful but anyways. This is like honestly one of the cheapest motherboards I could find that works well with the Ryzen CPUs and honestly it looks pretty cool but more importantly it completes the build perfectly. Now much like the CPU I am going to be listing an alternative option that will get everything done the same but it will probably be like 10 to 15 dollars cheaper in case that's something you might be interested in. But anyways this is a micro ATX motherboard and the memory type for this motherboard is DDR4 and it can support up to I believe 32 gigabytes of RAM so it has a fair amount of room to work with for expandability in the future in case you do want to make upgrades or anything later, like that later down the line. On the chance that you do want to run like SLI GPUs or want to install anything above 32 gigabytes of RAM then you will have to swap out the motherboard at some point but just for this build, I'm not planning on adding those kind of parts, so don't worry about it if you're going to be following this build like to the T. Anyways, since we're already talking about memory, for this build, I went with the 8GB kit of Crucial Ballistic Sport RAM. Now, when it comes to gaming and streaming, 8GB is definitely not ideal, but it should be able to get the job done, and that's why I'm recommending it for this budget build. However, if I was you, I'd definitely take the time to save up and get the 16GB kit, which I'm also going to have linked somewhere in the description below. Also guys, I'm so sorry if I'm talking like super fast, I just looked at my recording and I'm only like 3 minutes into the recording and I'm like almost done with like the video, which is kind of crazy, so I'm gonna try to like slow it down now. Alright, what was I even talking about? Oh, I was talking about the RAM, so uh, I'm gonna have a 16GB kit link in the description below in case you guys are interested in that. I do however think that if you're only going to be gaming and not streaming, then 8GB of RAM should be plenty. But anyways, this is going to be a single 8GB stick instead of two 4GB sticks, and that's because this way you're going to have more room to make upgrades in the future, as there's only two DIMM slots available on the motherboard, and instead of taking both of them up, we'll only be taking one up. And I'm pretty sure I've used this kit in a previous build before, and I've only heard good things about it from everyone who's purchased it, so that's why I'm going to be using it again in this build. So for the storage, I've actually went with the classic Western Digital Caviar Blue 7200 RPM hard drive, and again, that's another mouthful, but anyways, it's truly like one of the best long-lasting hard drives, and that's why I use it in like literally every single build I've done personally, every build video I've made, and that's the same reason why almost every other YouTuber or streamer or content creator use it in their builds as well. Now, of course, SSDs are kind of taking over, and the prices are coming down for them, but right now, SSDs like in the one terabyte range, Range aren't like incredibly affordable so I think this might be a better option for the people watching this video. Now the reason why I'm also recommending a normal hard drive rather than an SSD is because if you're recording on the side of streaming then you're definitely going to want to have some space to uh, like actually store your footage and when it's just streaming then of course you don't need nearly as much space but just to be safe that's why I'm using this in this build and if you're strictly just going to be streaming and you're not too worried about recording and having the extra space available then be sure to check out this Samsung M2 SSD which I do have on the screen right now. I believe it's like the 960 EVO series and it's like 250 gigabytes, which is like plenty to work with. Now the installation for this is super easy because it should slide or like the SSD should slide straight into the M2 slot on the front of your motherboard and that's really it for like the most part. Now I love SSDs like this because their read and write speeds are so incredibly fast and I couldn't recommend them more. Anyways much like the other alternatives I'm gonna have this link somewhere in the description below like the main part below like the main part oh my god i can't talk but it should be linked somewhere in the description below like the main parts list that i'm gonna have okay you guys know what i'm trying to say i'm moving on to the next part now so anyways um what was i even talking about oh the part that uh so moving on to the next thing which i'm sure is what you guys have mainly been waiting for and that's gonna be the graphics card now this is really tough for me because i want to do my best by keeping this build from getting too pricey like i said in the beginning of this video and that's why basically every single part that i've listed so far has been fairly affordable so for the graphics card much like most of the build i'm gonna be linking two cards and you can really pick between whichever one you'd like to 
too. Now, do keep in mind that Nvidia did recently announce their new line of RTX cards just a couple of months ago, and I actually have one of them. I'm rocking the RTX 2080 right now, which Nvidia actually sent me as a gift, but since that is like a thousand dollars for this build, I'm not going to be recommending that, and I recommend that you guys look into either the GTX 1060 or a GTX 1070. Now, I moved on from a GTX 20 1070 to the 2080, and honestly, both cards are amazing and do everything I need them to do perfectly. So I would definitely recommend trying to get the 1070 mainly because this is usually like the most important part of the build when it comes to gaming and it helps a ton with streaming and playing from the same PC like we're going to be doing with this build right here. So the 1070 is what I would recommend in case you're working on a budget. I know it is expensive but still like I think the 1070 is much better than the 1060 but it's not nearly as expensive as the 1080 if that makes sense. Also if you guys are getting overwhelmed with me recommending two things instead of one at the same time then I do want you guys to know that this build is powerful enough to handle literally any game out there so truly just go with whatever fits your budget the best and then make upgrades later down the line. Moving on from the card, we've got what's going to be housing the entire build and that's going to be the case. So for my other builds, I've always went with the, like a fairly simple case because it was affordable and could store everything with ease, but this time I decided to switch it up and for this build, we're actually going to be going with the Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1 Micro ATX case. So this is going to be a smaller case because it is uh, going to be following the Micro ATX form factor and I went with this because from my other videos, it seems like a lot of people just don't have a ton of space and like their room to work with a larger case, but in case you do want a larger one, then go ahead, follow me on Twitter and tweet me that you, you're looking for a different kind of case for your computer and then I'll do my best to like come up with something that suits your situation. But just because most of my viewers seem to not have a whole lot of room to work with in their, in le in their like bedroom or wherever their setup is, I thought I would use like a smaller case for this build and it is spacious enough for truly like any graphics card out there. Now, personally, I think this case is more than okay and the only issue that I can see you facing with it is having to store like the excess cables from the power supply, but with enough time and cable management, you should be able to hide them on the backside of the case perfectly. And lastly, since we're Already talking about the power supply let's actually elaborate on that and for this build i'm actually i actually decided to go with the 500 watt evga 80 plus white power supply damn every single like why is it that every single like computer part is like a mouthful but anyways this is incredibly affordable coming in at only like 35 dollars and it will be more than enough to power this build and i truly think that anything more than 500 watts for this power supply regarding this build and all the parts that i mentioned in the video already will be overkill because it's just going it's not going to be pulling more than 500 watts right it's going to be pulling well less than 500 so i really don't think that you're gonna have to spend extra to get something like 600 or 700 or a thousand or whatever right so i love this power supply because we already know it's been proven in has to be one of the best power supplies on the market due to its 80 plus white rating and it's pretty cheap so you really can't go wrong with picking it up anyways guys that's really it for the pc build video if you made it this far please do let me know in the comment section below and also feel free to comment any questions that you do have and i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can as always i will have every single part i mentioned in the video linked in the description below with amazon affiliate links if you do want to see me make a build like this in the future and actually record myself putting it all together, be sure to hit that like button before you go. Other than that, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Please share this video with your friends and other people who are interested in building computers. And be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel and you want to see more videos like this because we're on our way to 200,000 subscribers and all help is appreciated. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.